She dwelt among the untrodden ways beside the springs of Dove, a maid whom there were none to praise and very few to love, a violet by a mossy stone, half hidden from the eye, fair as a star when only one is shining in the sky. She lived unknown, and few could know when Lucy ceased to be. But she is in her grave, and oh, the difference to me. She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies. And all that's best of dark and bright meet in her aspect and her eyes. Thus mellowed to that tender light which heaven to gaudy day denies. One shade the more, one ray the less, had half impaired the nameless grace which waves in every raven tress or softly lightens of her face. Where thoughts serenely sweet express how pure, how dear their dwelling place. And on that cheek and o'er that brow, so soft, so calm, yet eloquent, the smiles that win, the tints that glow, but tell of days in goodness spent, a mind at peace with all below, a heart whose love is innocent. She was a phantom of delight when first she gleamed upon my sight, a lovely apparition sent to be a moment's ornament, her eyes as stars of twilight fair, like twilight's too, her dusky hair, all things else about her drawn from May time and the cheerful dawn, a dancing shape, an image gay, to haunt, to startle and waylay. I saw her upon nearer view, a spirit, yet a woman too, her household motions light and free, and steps of virgin liberty, a countenance in which did meet sweet records, promises as sweet, a creature not too bright or good for human nature's daily food, for transient sorrows, simple wiles, praise, blame, love, kisses, tears, and smiles. And now I see with eye serene the very pulse of the machine, a being breathing thoughtful breath, a traveler between life and death, the reason firm, the temperate will, endurance, foresight, strength, and skill. A perfect woman, nobly planned to warn, to comfort, and command, and yet a spirit still, and bright with something of angelic light. Bright star, would I were steadfast as thou art, not in lone splendor hung aloft the night, and watching with eternal lids apart, like nature's patient sleepless eremite, the moving waters at their priest-like task of pure ablution round earth's human shores, or gazing on the new soft fallen mask of snow upon the mountains and the moors, no, yet still steadfast, still unchangeable, pillowed upon my fair love's ripening breast, Feel forever its soft fall and swell. Awake forever in a sweet unrest. Still, still to hear her tender taken breath. And so live ever. Or else swoon to death. Oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms? Alone and palely loitering. The sedge has withered from the lake and no birds sing. Oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms, so haggard and so woe-begone? The squirrel's granary is full, and the harvest's done. I see a lily on thy brow, with anguish moist and fever dew, and on thy cheeks a fading rose fast withereth too. I met a lady in the meads, full beautiful, a fairest child. Her hair was long, her foot was light, and her eyes were wild. I made a garland for her head, and bracelets too, and fragrant zone. She looked at me as she did love, and made sweet moan. 
I set her on my pacing steed, and nothing else saw all day long. For sidelong would she bend and sing a fairy song. She found me roots of relish sweet, and honey wild, and manna dew. And sure in language strange she said, I love thee true. She took me to her elfin grot, and there she wept and sighed full sore. And there I shut her wild, wild eyes with kisses for. And there she lulled me asleep. And there I dreamed, ah, woe betide, the latest dream I ever dreamed on the cold hillside. I saw pale kings and princes too, pale warriors, death pale were they all. They cried, La belle dame sans merci, thee hath in thrall. I saw their starved lips in the gloam, with horrid warning gaped wide. And I awoke and found me here on the cold hillside. And this is why I sojourn here, alone and palely loitering, though the sedge is withered from the lake and no birds sing.